guys and welcome back to the Laird Performance YouTube channel. Some of you are probably thinking he is wearing the same clothes from the last video. Well, it's still the same day that I filmed the last video. I'm not a tramp. Today we are going to be cloning a Focus RS Mark III ECU for a car that we suspect has got ECU damage. We've sent the ECU away for repair and unfortunately they couldn't actually test it. So all that's left to do now is try and clone it and see if the issue goes away. We've tested all the wiring, we've ran all the checks that we can and everything is pointing towards the ECU. So what we're going to be using is, we're going to be using my flex tool which is going to take a read of the original ECU and then we're going to put it on to another one. Hopefully that is all it's going to take. So we're going to just show you guys what we have to do to actually do some of this process. So basically we're going to be using this tool which is called the flex. This is really good for cloning stuff. This tool can be used for, you know, OBD tuning, etc. But we tend to use it for more like stuff like this. Now, I very rarely do jobs like this. So this is probably a first for me as far as doing cloning is concerned, but just bench jobs in general, I tend not to have to do them. But I have done it before. So basically, we're going to be using this part, this part, and all these as well, as well as all this stuff up here. The only thing we're not going to be doing is plugging into the OBD with this car. The customer has supplied this new ECU that we're going to be putting the file onto. It's a second hand one from eBay. So what we're going to have to basically do is extract the file from the ECU that we've currently got and put it onto this newer one. The customer has bought it believing the part numbers were the same. However, they are slightly different. So I'm hoping this is all going to go pretty smoothly. But we're going to take you through some of the process of that. So we've got the two ECUs here. We've got this one, which is the one that we believe to be water damaged. There was a bit of water actually inside the plugs when we first pulled this off. So this is the original. You can actually see all of this here, this build up as well that's on it. And then we have the second one, which is definitely a lot cleaner looking. So hopefully, once we take the date off this one, we can program it to this and the car's gonna start. Because if the car doesn't start then, you know, we're back to square one again as well as more expense for the customer. So let's pull the file off that one now so that we can get it onto this and we'll show you just how that's done. So now that we've got this connected up, basically what I need to do is open up the program on here and it'll tell me what I need to put into here so that I can connect it to here. And once that's all done, basically we've got communication with the ECU, we've got power going into it from the mains. There's gonna be a bunch of wires going everywhere, but I'll get this hooked up, I'll open up the program and then we'll see where everything's got to go. The good thing is it gives you a diagram as well. So on here you can now see a diagram of the ECU and it shows me what colours have to go where. It also tells me exactly what point I should be using on the flex tool. So it gives direct access to the ECU itself. So now that we've got it all connected up, you'll be able to see we've got all these wires running directly into the ECU itself. So now we're going to take a read, hopefully. We're going to basically connect it and then try and take the full lot of it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and test the connection now. Hopefully it's going to say that it's successful. And that'll mean that I've got everything, you know, in the correct places. Success, great. So now we can actually take a read of everything that we need to take a read of. So basically what I'm gonna do now is take a full backup of the ECU. That way I can program it onto the new one. So now that the read of the full backup has been taken, I need to switch all these wires across onto the other ECU. I'm gonna take another full backup just to be safe. And then we're gonna try and program it on and see if it all works. So we've just started to upload the actual original read file from the original ECU. So I'm programming that on now, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a read off the ECU, compare it, make sure it's the right file, make sure everything's all good. Then we just need to test it in the car. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to actually show you guys what we see when we read a map file off your car. Some people think that we get all these cool tables and all that sort of stuff that shows up, but initially that is absolutely not what you get. Um, it's only once you've like, got a lot of experience or you've got the files to be able to define what controls what as to when you can actually work things out for yourself. But when we initially 
get the files, this is all it looks like and it's, it's absolutely not what you think. <laughs> this is what it looks like. All these little numbers and letters everywhere, which means absolutely nothing. Sometimes you might see people that will post things of it in 2D format um, and that basically you know, shows it looking like this, so you might see people posting things like this. But ultimately this all means nothing until you define each and every individual map. You don't need every single one that's in the ECU because there is thousands. When you're, well, you need everyone for it to do what you're doing currently, but when it comes to making power, you don't need every single one of them to be tweaked to make power. Once you actually define some maps and make some changes, it looks a little bit more like this. You can see that some of these are actually highlighted, all these letters and numbers, and that's all things that we've actually changed within the map file itself. So there is loads of these when we do cars like this. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're actually looking at. It's not just, you know, all these cool tables and graphs and dials that we tweak. It's actually more to do with just raw data. So the ECU is now cloned. It all runs, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see. Now we just need to get back to the diagnostics, which is running the car, seeing if it still has the issue. And if it does, we're going to need to investigate further. But that's all for today's video. If you're enjoying these weeklies, then make sure to leave a comment below on what you would like to see on the channel. We'll try our best to cover it. But until then, we'll see you soon.